next thing we'll be looking at is courses of business failure courses of business failure that course of business failure we're looking at what could result to a business or an enterprise not succeeding at or an entrepreneur not succeeding with his business and most times the major cause of all this could be as a result of due to problem arising from improper planning and uh, when the business is growing sometimes competition from other similar people who do similar uh, people who do similar business then here you know, we are looking at factors like one lack of talented hiring prospects lack of talented hiring process hiring prospects the lack of talented hiring prospects we are talking about most times the ability for or the ability of an entrepreneur to hire the talented or people who are best suited for the job gives him an edge because if you end up hiring people who are liability or who are not as assets to the company for people who are not going to contribute positively to the company then it will definitely put the business it will definitely lead to the collapse of that business because business you don't miss business with pleasure you get the right people for such business and the next thing we look at is rising need for consistent innovation when you start a business enterprise a business or an enterprise there will be need for consistent innovation because competition will come up from here from people who do similar business or who want to similar business with you as an entrepreneur so you need to be consistent in innovation you need to keep on making research you need to work hard to make sure that your competitors do not overtake you in terms of innovation so you have to be researching on the best method or the best way to refine your products and make it better so lack of consistent innovation or not planning and not bringing in new ideas or having people who cannot contribute new ideas to your business or contribute things that will bring positive impact to that business will be to its failure. So the third one we are going to look at is managing cash flow. Managing cash flow. So this one will be under this you need to look at the income expenditures we look at the money you pay to workers how you manage income and expenditures and profits how you're able to push them for the growth and expansion of your business if you are not able to plan this properly and you're not able to take a proper recording of cash flows in the company then in that business will be made for you so woke up one day and discover that money or um, finances must have been mismanaged so you have to take care of that aspect because cash or finance is one of the major ingredients needed in any business or any business to to, to be sustained then the next thing we need to look at is financing. In terms of financing, every business needs financing. 
at all times, right from the beginning. You must not start with too much money. You can start very small, but make sure that you have a plan on when to inject money into the business. When to, if you're going to take money or take a loan, you must know when to collect loan. Most times, it is good to not to start taking loan when that business is still at a conception late uh, stage. Make sure that you know, you are sure that the business has to be going and you are sure that the risk involved in that business is not high before going to call them loan. And most times when you are financing your business, you can finance from your personal income, you can finance from contributions from families and uh, friends, family and friends. And also you can also you can finance your business from different income sources and also as the business keep on going, you will need to finance it. You can need to you continue to inject fund and to check if your business is growing or if it is not growing. You need to know if you're making income or if you're losses. So financing is very important in your business. So um, the next thing you need to look at is decision making. In terms of decision making, you have to be able to make the right decisions you have to make the right when to bring in when to hire when to fire you need to know lay off staff who are not supposed to contributing positively to, to your business so you must make the right decision when to take loan you must be able to know when to to bring in new strategies and when to in terms of decision your decision must be positive decisions make the right decisions which will contribute positively to the business because if you end up taking the wrong advice or taking the, the wrong steps you end up collapsing your business so ensure that you make the right decisions and know when to make it the right time and at the, at, the, at the right point in time, apart from time, you must also know the exact time and the exact areas you need to make decisions and critical decisions. So, the next one we look at is marketing. Marketing, this is also very important. So, in terms of marketing, this is one of the major things that will drive the business or make it fail. So when you have products, you have services, if you don't have the right market, if you don't create the right market, if you don't know the right market to to deliver your services or your products, then it means your business will definitely fail. Because after manufacturing or after producing or if you have skills to offer and service, if you don't have where to deploy it, if the right persons do not know that you exist, then you will not end any income. So you might be able to do the right marketing, like even the branding of your product, packaging matters a lot, and the services you must create an advert, make your customers know, the targeted customers know that you exist. So before, because people may need your your service, but if they do not know that you exist, it becomes a problem because you have you won't have the right opportunity to showcase what you have in terms of products and services. So the next thing we look at is finding the the right uh, merchant service. So we must is finding. Chance service. This is also very important. When starting a business, you must find the right merchant service because without this merchant service, these days we're living in a modern world where most businesses are being done online and being done via an automated form, via wire transactions. 
we want to make payments these days, it must be done through a payment gateway. And you must enlist as a, a merchant using the right service in order to collect or receive payments from your customers in order to make transactions. So most times in Nigeria, like internationally, we have PayPal. We have we have PayPal in Nigeria. We have Flutterwave. We have Bookpay. Flutterwave. We, we have Bookpay. We have Paystack. So these are various payments gateway platform that merchants can use online to collect to receive money from the customers. So usually they charge a little percentage for each financial transaction. So this payment gateway will provide a medium through which you can you can receive payments. Your customers can easily use their debit or credit cards to make payments with when they want to purchase the product. You go to Comga Junior and all these online sites we have and if you make a purchase you will be provided an opportunity to provide your debit card number and do the right of authentication before you can be able to make a successful transaction or order of the products. This is done via the, the, the right merchant service. So, for you to be able to do that, for you to be approved for the merchant account, it means you must ensure that you have a good credit rating. You must be transparent about your business, especially your past financing and previous merchant accounts. If it is possible, you should be willing to pay higher fees to accommodate your low credit rating or lack of successful business evidence. Then, the shop should also be around or within the locality of where you are doing or where that merchant service of um, can uh, services can cover. So the next thing we need to look at is securing a commercial mortgage. Securing a commercial mortgage. So when you rent a business property, most times you must sometimes we rent, sometimes we, we build from the scratch, trying to have the resources. But having a business property is very important because it brings about stability. Then your, your mortgage repayment will be lower, especially when you have a property. You see that the repayment is lower compared to when you rent, because the renting is always on the high side. So most times interest payments on commercial property is tax deductible. Then control and flexibility via property alterations because it is yours. Then also an increase in value will also increase your business capital. Then the next thing we have to look at also is in terms of legality. Talk about legal legality. So most times, before you start a business, you must ensure that you do the you pack your business legally. Because if you don't do that, you may end up operating without approval, and this can lead to sh shutting down of the business. Make sure that you take the right legal step. And for the people starting the business as an entrepreneur, if it's a partnership business, the right papers need to be signed, the right agreement it needs to be backed. If there are shareholders and investors, the right terms and conditions need to be put in place, backed legally. And those to ensure that you do your business with people who are of legal age. Because transacting business with uh, businesses with People who are minors or mentally deranged renders that business or that contract invalid. So you ensure that your business is registered, you are licensed to or uh, you have the right permits 
to the kind of business you do because some businesses may be illegal while some are legal so ensure that your business is among the legal ones or the approved ones in your locality because the particular business may be legal in certain places and in some places may be illegal because there are regions where alcohol alcoholic sales and productions uh, production are not permitted and there are regions where they are permitted so narcotics there are areas where they are sold there are areas where they are prohibited we also need to consider in terms of trademarks ensure that you do not use names that are business names that have already been acquired by others or that have trademarks on them businesses or business ideas that have been patented we also need to be careful because people secure patents to their products to use them for a certain period of time within which nobody is allowed to produce similar kind of uh, goods uh, similar similar kind of deliver similar kind of services so to ensure that we do not contravene of legal issues because by the time you are not legal in what you're doing or you contravene an existing law remember the law is not a respect of anybody so to avoid the business closing down ensure that you take the right legal steps then we also need to as an entrepreneur you also need to be rational because consider the, the next one which is unknown the unknown factors so you need to be rational logical and a logical thinker so you need to be a rational and a logical thinker so so you must be able to keep dealing with, with unpredicted competition and also you must be able to overcome challenges when you have comp comp competition from your competitors the normal thing you have to uh, do the right thing in order to be up to date up, up to speed with your competitors you must not do or do or, or engage in competitions which will bring down the image of your company or affect the people you are extending the services to ensure that you, you are innovative in bringing in ideas that will keep you up to date in your business and uh, because most times competition bringing positive results these days you have like the, the Japanese vehicle manufacturing companies like Toyota, you have Honda, you have Mitsubishi, you have Nissan, you see competitions come up you see each one trying to perform better than others each one bringing in innovation from time to time cars coming with models with different spec so in order to satisfy customers because you cannot because you cannot really relax because your customers are to feel that what you have is okay, your bag will be there for in the 60 years now. People are always looking for new things, innovations, new ideas, okay, or ways of solving problems. So you must be innovative and make sure that you raise up for the unknown because the business, most times, there are unknowns. There are things you don't know which may definitely come up, which you also need to be able to handle. So the next thing we will look at, we will look at the skills required by entrepreneurs. Skills required by entrepreneurs. So what are the skills required by entrepreneurs? So the entrepreneur is commonly seen and perceived as an innovator. The skill required for successful entrepreneurship are innovation and ability to create to be creative, to generate new ideas for business venture. An entrepreneur must have the quality of leadership and a strong sense of unified teamwork to gain maximum benefits. So, in terms of the skills, he must be flexible. The first one we look at is flexibility. Flexibility. 
done it. Most times, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you need to be flexible in your business. You must be able to, you must be flexibility, you must, in your partner, you must be flexible in, in your business. You must be able to figure out your workplace. You must have a maximum control on the work you do. Because this will help you gain maximum benefit. So you must not be rigid, you must adjust to changes and innovations. Then diversity, also, you need to build up diverse ideas and unique ideas that will contribute positive to your business. Having a diverse range of ideas to choose from, according to your entrepreneurial vision, can also help you grow your business. So, the next thing we look at, we talk about flexibility and diversity. 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 So, the next thing we need to look at is purpose of entrepreneurship. We can purpose, we can purpose of so purpose of entrepreneurship why do people go into entrepreneurship most times we have several pets people working we say several pets what do you mean by that most people working in the corporate world are able to fulfill their desires so most times when you're working in a company you discover that what they are doing there may not be exactly what you the right joy in doing. You know, most times people love working and earning your comfort. What they love doing or what they, they do for a living. So most times you may want to create a business from what you're passionate about. So if you're working for someone, the method or the ways through which the business is being done or uh, transactions that are done may not suit your taste or may not really uh, fulfill your desire. So you starting your own business and running it your, your, your own way will be the reason why you, you want to open a business and this can be a purpose of entrepreneurship. Then control and independence is the next factor. We say control and independence. Most times you see that when you start up your, your own enterprise or business, you have a control over it, you control its growth, you control how things are done in that enterprise, and you are independent. Uh, independent. You, independence is very important because you are doing it on your own, so you want to do it your own way without heavily rely on other people or other companies or other businesses so you want to do it on your own from your own ideas and from your own decisions so the next thing we have to look at is demand for innovative ideas sometimes the reason why you may want to start off your business if you are creative and you have a lot of ideas towards that business so when you start it on your own you run it your own way and if you're innovative in nature you always inject your innovations into the business to make it grow because if you're working for someone not all your ideas or not all your positive ideas will be welcome so when you start your own business your innovations, if you're creative, if you're innovative, you see that you will be the one who can be able to bring in your or deploy your innovations at any time. So the sole purpose of providing the corporate world with more innovative ideas in hope to gain profit leads or led to the increase in new business. With maximum people involved, 
you know, obtain a respectable place in the corporate world in the premises, become more and more creative by coming up with innovative ideas for the markets. So people like Zuckerberg, when they started Facebook, Facebook was looking very small then. A lot of functionality or features have not been added then. We've seen that with time, Facebook continues to improve. The same thing with Google, Amazon. Amazon started with selling of books, publishing of books. You can see today, Amazon sells a lot of products, electronics, books. They still do their publishing, but Amazon are into almost everything today. You can see it. it, it. There is always a demand for innovation, for innovative ideas from time to time. So that these are the purpose where, why someone may start a business or be an entrepreneur. Then the next thing we look at, we look at the challenges. Challenges, challenges for entrepreneurship. So what are the challenges? So due to popular belief, entrepreneurship is considered to be an easy way for people not in favor of working on that or for someone else. In several ways, many aspects of this statement might be completely true. However, just like any other profession, being an entrepreneur and choosing entrepreneurship as a career may come with yes, may come with challenges. So come with several such challenges and what are they? The ideas you have may be monotonous ideas. So most times you have the stress of coming up with the stress of coming up with an innovative idea that has not been used in the market before, lingers on several entrepreneurs. When choosing entrepreneurship as a career, it is crystal clear that the only way to stay on top of the corporate world is by coming up with brand new ideas. Creativity is the key to success in entrepreneurship. However, with such a vast global marketplace, the ideas proposed are often monotonous, which lead to the trouble of disapproval approval from the critics. This is the most common yet crucial challenge that is faced by every entrepreneur. So, when you talk about monotonous ideas, you see that the ideas you contribute may not be or the ideas you bring from your innovation may not be welcomed immediately by people it takes time most times you see that critics will be there they will say I don't most people even when they know that it may it is a good idea they will criticize it people challenges must be there the, because the idea originates from you, so before it sinks into people, or the majority of people takes a lot of time, takes a lot of challenge, takes a lot of difficulty. Sometimes they oppose it outright. So that is one of the problems of entrepreneurship. You must have it in mind that innovations must be criticized by people. Even Facebook at the moment is being criticized by people. Despite these advantages, people are also bringing up the disadvantages of social media like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So the next thing we need to look at is disadvantage of being a startup business. So this is one of the challenges, disadvantage of being a start of business. So one of the most crucial and problematic disadvantage is that the challenge of being a startup business in the market. This challenge of often leads to trouble of working late hours during the initial phase of the business. It's often a crucial challenge to be the startup business in the corporate world and then leave your way to the top when facing dynamic and extensive competition. Leaving your way to the top will not be a very easy task. So as a startup business, you have to grow that business that to nurture it from the beginning to or until it grows up or it, it comes to acceptance, general acceptance because you see it's not always easy starting a new concept and taking it to the top because there are competitors already, there are people existing in the market already. Even when that idea is or that business niches 
relatively new, you will still see that to be able to take it to the height you desire, you need to work hard. Most times you work late in the night, you have to work tirelessly to be able to bring it to a general or global acceptance. So that is one of the disadvantages or, or challenges, not really disadvantages, but challenges of entrepreneurship. So you must be able to, as an entrepreneur, to face these challenges before you can be able to make your business successful. Then we have major responsibilities. So one of the threats of choosing entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship as a career is the independence. You have to talk about independence. Independence, you're on your own. You have to make it grow on your own. The independence that you get by being an entrepreneur. However, being in charge of a unified team and having complete control over your decision or decision you make comes with a lot of responsibility. This might prove to be very challenging for your business. Being the one in charge means being responsible for anything that is going on in the business. This may prove to be very challenging for any entrepreneur. So you are the one controlling, leading other people. So whatever comes out of it is will be attributed to you. If it turns out positive, you will have the highest credit. Turns out negative, you will take the highest blame. So this can be a challenge for every entrepreneur. Then the risk of success or failure. This can also be a challenge. The risk of success or failure. So most times there are several risks that may come along with entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship. Like we have said earlier, it is the responsibility of an entrepreneur to take care of several things, of bringing ideas and also adopting and implementing new methods. So this can result to failure or can also result to success. So keep in mind the success or the downfall of your business depends on the entrepreneur and therefore it is a highly challenging task to always make the right decision for your company. Then from this we will move to challenges, we move to challenges of entrepreneurship in Nigeria. Look at challenges. Challenges in Nigeria. So, how these are uh, one to look at in Nigeria. If you compare Nigeria to other countries like industrialized nations like Korea, Japan, China, US, Brazil, you see the entrepreneurs, we have them in Nigeria, but the rate at which entrepreneurship. Uh, is, is, is being adopted as a way of life or as a way of improving the economy. We don't have people regularly entering into businesses or starting new ventures. That is why you see in Nigeria a lot of, we have a lot of people searching for jobs. People prefer to work for already established businesses or for the, for the government. And if the government cannot employ everyone, the government does not have the capacity. No government at anywhere can employ everybody. So we want to look at the major reasons why people find it hard to move into entrepreneurship or to start new venture, business venture. One is the lack of capital. It's a lack of capital. So what do you mean by lack of capital? People may not have, when you don't have the right startup capital, a business to start your business, or to start your capital to start your business, you may not have the right amount of different businesses, or different capital, uh, startup capital amounts. So, you want to start up a little business, a small size business, you require a small capital compared to when you're starting a medium or a large scale business. So, we have to source this money 
most times you see the challenges of where do you source money from how do you get the money so once you have the right capital to start your business you can be able to do that but most times it is not that we lack capital the little one we have can get us going but most times people will think that you need big money before you can be able to start up a business so but most times you see that we have to source loans to expand businesses or to continue to push the business or sustain it or to expand it becomes a problem without capital nothing can really move so lack of capital is a serious problem or a serious challenge to entrepreneurship in Nigeria then the next thing we need to look at another challenge maybe as a result of difficulty in getting those which we have already said which is tied to capital difficulties getting loans so you must have the right business to be able to get along in Nigeria there are some businesses that are not that are difficult to start with loans most times for you to start any business or enterprise you are expected to like some microfinance bank will expect you to have worked for six months and they want to see the progress of the business We've seen how a business is progressing before they will give you loan, and some microfinance bank will not approve a loans for gambling businesses like betting. They don't um, approve loans for uh, business any business with high risk, like sometimes poultry business. Some microfinance banks will not give loan for poultry because of the challenges of or uh, unforeseen. Things that may happen in terms of mortality of pets or epidemic or disease, a disease can come up before uh, that can easily affect such business. So that is why most times you get a loan, the interest rates charged by banks or by finan financial or financial organizations that also affect most people who want to start a business because the interest rates most times in Nigeria is very high so it makes it difficult for people to secure loans and the collateral you need to provide before you can get a loan sometimes you are required to provide collateral so if you don't have such it means it will be difficult for you to secure the amount you need for your business then another factor is the poor state poor state of infrastructure poor state of infrastructure so you see that in developed countries it is very easy to start any business or any legal business because the right infrastructures are there the roads for marketing of goods you have internet facilities you have electricity and also you have the right all the infrastructures need the uh, infrastructure need, uh, infrastructures needed for your business are in place but in developing countries like nigeria where electricity is a problem if you want to dive into ict it becomes a problem because you will need constant supply of electricity so running on generators running on on external powers like solar it's very expensive to 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 fit to fit such bills. We see that if the infrastructure bad roads, poor internet and slow internet connections can affect the can be a challenge or be a serious challenge to new startup or businesses that are already existing. We see that sometimes businesses some business wind up or close close down because of of poor infrastructure. So in Nigeria we have most of our infrastructures are very poor, we don't have electricity, our tele telecommunication system are not or is not really stable. You see most times low internet connectivity, most times inter interrupted uh, uh, network interruption, sometimes you discover even the data needed for 
for internet connection. You see that most times it is on the high side. So poor infrastructure is a very good challenge to entrepreneurship development in Nigeria. So another factor we need to look at, we look at inconsistency in government policy. Inconsistent or inconsistent government policies. The government policies. This can also be a very serious problem. One government comes in today, make decisions that affects a business. Tomorrow another one comes up and overrule what the, the previous government have said. So you see most times businesses have been the growth of a business, the growth, the ability of starting a business can can be tied largely to government policies. Because sometimes the amount of tax levied on businesses by governments or several governments can affect the growth or can also slow down, can increase or slow down the growth of businesses. So policies that are made by different governments because it is in the habit of successive governments not to continue the policies of previous governments. Most times you see every government or every governor or every president, so presidents who come in, they want to they come in with their own policy, overrule policies that have been set by their predecessors. So these also affect businesses in Nigeria. Now that's thing we need to look at unstable Nigerian economy and politics. Have unstable economy and talk about politics. So the state of the Nigerian economy and politics is another serious challenge for entrepreneurs. The state of the country plays an essential role in the country's development. All the socio-economic problems and political instability do not help the success or successful development of business. So you see our economy is unstable. Fluctuating dollar to naira exchange rates it affects businesses, policies, uh, policies that are pledged most times to have stability in different parts of the country. This discourages investors. This discourages people who want to invest in certain areas because sometimes for you to start up a business, a business may may thrive well in certain localities or regions than the other. So when you don't have a trust on the the stability in terms of peace, in terms of uh, the thriving atmosphere for a business, you see that you may not have, the, you may be afraid to start up a business in such an area. So, most times you see the economy of the country, which is which is not stable, affects the chances of new businesses coming up. Uh, the policies that are played, or healthy policies, which also challenges entrepreneurship in Nigeria. The next thing we have to look at is poor knowledge on how to run a business. This one is also another serious problem. Okay. Poor. So this is what we say is poor. Poor knowledge on how to run a business. So this is another problem we have. In terms of running a business, you see that most people in Nigeria, actually the reason why most persons do not go into business is that they've not gotten the right knowledge, the right thinking and the right exposure. Just like that's the reason why this course is being offered in entrepreneurship courses are offered in, in almost all schools in Nigeria. We are now have entrepreneurship centers in various schools to be able to pass down the knowledge, to be able to pass down the idea and the, the strategies of how entrepreneurship is done or how someone can start up an enterprise. So in order to be able to give the students the integrity of entrepreneurship, this should make them anytime they are able to uh, lay their hands on 
platforms, no matter how small it is, they can be able to uh, start up something positive, no matter how small. They, you know, because of the lack of knowledge, the lack of exposure, so that most students graduate without having things to do. Most times, they roam in the streets or moving around the street, walking down the streets or streets of various cities for years searching for jobs. So, but without knowing that they have the, the right ideas and they have the right what it takes to start a business. So, poor knowledge on how to run a business, most of them, when you give them the, the capital to start, they will mismanage that capital because they don't have the right knowledge to start up a business. So, this can also be a challenge, and that is the reason why the entrepreneurship centers are being developed in all states across the country. Then, another problem can be marketing strategy. Talk about the seventh one we say marketing strategy. So, if you have a business, most times you see people may have business or may start up businesses, some have tried. But the problem is that if you don't have the right marketing strategy, how to sell your products or market your services, how to deploy your services, how to take it to or make your targeted um, customers know what you do, may make it difficult for you because if you start up a venture without making people fit or without having people to patronize you, it means that business will fail. So the challenge, uh, one of the challenges can also be marketing strategy. So not having the right ideas of how to on how to sell your product or deploy them or deliver them to your targeted customers. Then another problem which is also a big problem is lack of patience. Lack of patience. Every business requires patience. Every business requires the hard work, consistency. You have to be consistent. You have to be focused as an entrepreneur. In Nigeria, you see most times people they get rich syndrome. Everyone wants to start a big business, which will start up in amount money. People prepare to take up a bike and start because when you after when you acquire a, a, a motorcycle, you can easily use that to do shuttle or a taxi or a car, quick shuttle and big mornings. You see, that is the kind of business we like in Nigeria where you get the money sharp sharp and very easy. But most businesses, most good businesses require consistency and perseverance. You have to continue pushing in, you have to continue putting in hard work, you have to nurture the business to to from the early stage to it when it is now stable and it, will, it is now stable and can now give the resources to you. So patience is a problem. That's why most people run to betting shop and blow up their monies, take your money there. In the next two minutes, you're betting one hundred thousand or one million. That's something that the game will go in your favor. But it end up it end up going the other way, swinging towards the other direction. You become you become frustrated because anything can happen. That is why betting is a very risky venture. So the lack of patience. That is why most Nigerians prefer to go to bet shops to blow up their money rather than investing it into something that they can nurture over time. Then what are the possible solutions? Of these challenges that we're talking about, we mentioned them lack of capital, sometimes family funding, funding from friends, sometimes saving up and um, generate a little capital or the capital you to use to start up your business. We're talking about under lack of capital, then getting loans, make sure you're, you're able to start your business, not sure it to an extent, at least up to six months, and be able to. Because no lender will give you money or borrow you money without watching your company financial history 
most times they will ask you to go to bank to get your account statement in order to before they can approve loans and select the right business because if you select the right business and your business is backed up legally you will be given loans so most times you also consider the interest rates when you when you want to get the loans make sure you watch the interest rates if the interest rate is you don't want to can pay you don't go for such loans so you compare between the lending companies and select the best among them then the infrastructure this one lies on the government to provide the right infrastructure because if there is if there is transformation in infrastructural development it will spur up more persons to move into businesses many guys are interested in moving into tech businesses today which is one of the businesses that are that are really transforming or improving the economy of different countries but due to poor internet connectivity due to high amount char or tariff charged on data or what you call it data internet data and also due to um, epileptic supply of electricity so you see that ICT is not really moving fast in the country it's really moving at a very sluggish rate compared to other developing countries even in Africa it is sad to to note that Nigeria is still beyond compared to other countries like Kenya Egypt and other other countries that are advanced in terms of ICT then the next thing we have to talk about is inconsistency inconsistent government policy so if your government can can have a consistent policy they can make decisions which will not drastically or negatively affect the growth of businesses in Nigeria this will also spur more people to go into entrepreneurship then unstable economy our economy keep on fluctuating Naira is changing at almost getting to or over 400 naira today you see in the last few years the naira dollar exchange rate has really impacted negatively on those businesses that are that are about to start and those that have started already then we also talk about politics or stable politics to see this issue of Fulani Hesmen clashes or at different locations the banditry we hear about instability, we talk about a lot of things happening in Nigeria, the politics yeah, cause Nigeria affects people starting up business or any business. To start up a business in Nigeria, you have to think of areas where stable areas and you see in most part of the country, the regions are stable. You want to go to Jos or is it Abuja, or is it Kano, or Chaco to talk about we talk about the stability issues as a result of politics played in Nigeria. Then if, if this can be handled, if we have a stable politics, we have a stable economy, then this will really help us. We have positive politics, healthy politics and not you know, die politics. Then we talk about poor knowledge on how to run businesses. So that is why students are encouraged to take up this course entrepreneurship development, EDD, one to six, along side with other entrepreneurial courses you will you need to undergo at the course or during the course of your of your study or your program, be it MD, be it HND, so BSc or whatever you do, any entrepreneurial opportunity, knowledge, you all should always research on how to gain new knowledge, especially in your area of interest. To make sure you gain new knowledge on how to run any business before you dive into it. Because diving into a business without properly knowing the integrity of that business means that you will definitely fail. So, so lack of plan is is planning to fail. The next one is patience. Um, we we'll talk about marketing strategy, which is the seventh one. So you must deploy the right strategy on how to market your products before you dive into a business. You must have the right market. Ensure that there are people who patronize you and how to deliver those products or services to them 
you know, was able to think of this before you start up a business. So this getting the right marketing strategy can boost your business and can also encourage you to start one. The lack of patience, patience and perseverance, consistency is very important. So needs must in cultivate the idea of nurturing a business from small, no matter how small, and to is good, not just diving into a business and then expecting profit to come out overnight. So patience must be part and a very important ingredient in entrepreneurship development. Mm -hmm.